In this tutorial, we're going to talk about frequency distributions. Frequency distributions are ways of visualizing distributions. Frequency distributions can be used with any kind of measurement scale, nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio, but I'm going to focus on interval and ratio scales. So what is a distribution? A distribution with an interval or ratio scale is a set of numbers on a number line, like so. So we have a bunch of numbers, and they range from negative 10 to 10, and each of these dots represents a number. And this is a, a continuous quantity, that is, the value can be sliced as thinly as needed. When we see a bunch of numbers, and I've jiggled it somewhat on the y-axis so that you can see the shape of the distribution a little bit, it's, it's hard to visualize this way. So we need some way with continuous quantities like this to, to visualize the density of the distribution, like how how many uh, of these numbers fall between negative two and a half to negative one and a half? Uh, how many are here? We need some way of visualizing this. So what we're going to do is take these things and put them into bins, like so. What do I mean by a bin? I'm going to slice this number line up into the counting numbers. So we're going to say all of the numbers that fall from negative nine and a half to negative eight and a half go into this bin, the negative 9 bin. From negative 8.5 to negative 7.5, they go into the negative 8 bin, and so forth. So we just slice this up into bins that are one number wide, and then count how many are in each bin. So we get something that looks like this. Now this is somewhat hard to visualize because the numbers are going to stack on each other. Instead of this, we get this. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a y-axis like so, the frequency axis here. And we're going to say, you know, how many are in this bin? How many are in this bin? How many in this bin? So if we rearrange them, we get something like this. So in the negative 9 bin, there's 1. In negative 8, there's 1, 2. And negative 7, 4, and so forth. We can see that negative 2 has the most with 12. A 1 comes close behind with 11, and so forth. Now this, we can see the shape of the distribution. Uh, most of the time when we talk about frequency distributions, you will not see a graph that looks like this. Instead, you might just look at the, I'm going to put in some grid lines, you might see the tops of these bins connected with lines like so. And we'll actually remove the data. And this is called a frequency polygon. So what we can see very easily is the shape of the distribution. And we can still see how many are in each bin. So I can see that in the zero bin there are eight, and in the six bin there are four, and so forth. A frequency polygon is not the most common way of displaying a distribution. It's actually something called a histogram. It displays the same amount of information, but instead of dots with, connected by lines, we get a bar graph that's sort of smushed together. It'll have the same shape. It looks like this. So you can see if I go back and forth, you can see that it's exactly the same information. So here, the negative 2 bin is 12 high, the 1 bin is, is 11 high, just like with the frequency polygon. So this bar graph smushed together is called a histogram. And this is the, the, the most common way of, of displaying a, a frequency distribution. It's a good way of, of seeing the shape, and we can also see where uh, the central tendency is likely to be, and so forth. Displaying the frequency is one way, but we can also display the probability or the proportion of each bin, like so. So here we have on the, on the y-axis probability, or we could say proportion. And there, there happen to be 100 numbers, so the, the frequency and the probability line up nicely. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. So in the in the two bin, we see that there were four, and that's four percent of the total of, of one hundred percent. So we can talk about frequency, we can talk about proportion or probability. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about expected values.